Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. Here we are approaching the middle of July and pest pressure is full speed, especially for our squash plants. So today I wanna to share with you a few methods I've been trialing this year to help prevent and maintain my squash, pumpkins, and melons from squash bugs and squash bind fours. But first I wanna give you a quick tour of what I'm calling my pumpkin patch. I do have drip irrigation ran to this entire area, which has been super helpful. I do plan on doing another tour and be very detailed and sharing every variety, but for now, just because I don't have much fruit set, I'm just gonna give you a quick tour. So on the first row up against the fence, I have tomatoes. And the last two plants are cucumbers. And then I just put in some cosmos. Row two and three are all pumpkins. Row four is mainly watermelons with a couple of cantaloupe plants at the beginning. And the last row is all squash. I have a couple spaghetti squash and then zucchini. And the last one is a patty pan. The first step I took to mitigate pest pressure is crop rotation. Now last year I planted all my squash in containers up close to my house. And this year I took this area that was full of weeds, I tilled it and mixed in some compost and fertilizer to create an in-ground garden space. Because I've never grown squash here, it is highly unlikely any squash bugs have overwintered in this area and hopefully it makes it harder to find them. I also planted something called a trap crop. Here on my last row, I planted three zucchini squash weeks earlier than my cucumbers, pumpkins, and melons. Squash bugs are known to prefer summer green and yellow squash, so my hope is to contain them onto these host plants first, and then I could always direct sow more summer squash a month from now and still get a harvest because they produce so quickly, and they are only about a 45 to 50 day crop. Another method I did was to use fabric or floating row cover. Here is just my frost protection blanket that I use over my plants during the winter to protect them from frost. And I also use these little mini hoop supports to create little hoop houses over my baby plants. And I'll make sure to link all the products I use down below. The row covers aid in plant establishment and exclude insect pests during the seedling stage. I did remove the row cover since the plants will begin to flower soon and I cannot assist in hand pollination with my work schedule. I've also been trialing food grade DE or diatomaceous earth. Now I just been applying using this old uh, protein bottle container. I just poke some holes on top and then just sprinkle on the plants. Um, I've also seen people use flower sifters or pantyhose or even a baby powder bottle. And DE is made from the fossilized remains of tiny aquatic organisms called diatoms. It causes certain insects to dry out and die by absorbing the oils and fats from the cuticle of the insect's exoskeleton. I also have been and plan to continue to monitor and check the plants daily, including the undersides of the leaves. If I see any eggs, then I use the back of duct tape or a lint roller to take the eggs off and place them in soapy water. If you happen to see any of the adult squash bugs, then you can spray them with a soapy water solution with Dawn soap, or if you're like me, I just take them off and squish them. Now, I haven't seen any signs of the squash vine bore yet, but I know it's coming, so I have been taking preventive measures and just spraying the outside stem with BT. If I see any signs of the worm inside the stem, then I'll take a syringe filled with BT and just inject that right into the stem. But that is it. That is how I'm taking preventive measures of keeping pests out of my pumpkin patch. But you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below any tips and tricks that you guys use for your squash. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be on the lookout for updates and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Yeah, bye -bye.